What's up, people? I thought I would just add why you're watching me take all this apart. I'll put the link to this motor kit in the video description, just in case anybody's interested in buying this kit. The link is in the UK, so anybody about, maybe they might need to keep from somebody else. There you go. See you later, people. Somebody here, I don't know who, has used spray grease. You know, that silver shit. Someone has sprayed everything in that silver lube grease stuff. Don't do this, people. Don't do this. You don't put grease on lathes. Use lathe oil, whey oil, proper stuff, yeah? Don't put this silver stuff on there. It's a nightmare to get off. And it just coagulates and everything sticks to it. So that took ages to get off. That's it, rant over. Bye. Right. So what I went through and did off camera the other day is I cleaned up all this stuff. She was just rusty as hell. So I cleaned it all up. Just with WD-40, some light scotch bright, and just time. Cleaned all these up. But what somebody done with these, what you have for this is what's called whey oil. And whey oil goes in like all of these things, and it's what lubricates all of your, your whey's. These are your whey's. Well, what they done is, you know this bloody silver grease that was in here the spray grease this stuff they'd used that and it's sort of all coagulated no you don't put grease or anything like that in lathes where it needs oil it has oil if it hasn't no because grease shit sticks to grease so i had to clean all that off clean everything back so now we're back to start but this lathe is in much better condition than mine. All these threads, they are barely used. These are called Acme threads. And they are barely used. Mine are fucking near enough worn out. You can feel they're a little bit sharper in the middle than there, but mine are nearly to a point. So this lathe has definitely hasn't had much use. It just hasn't been looked after very well. So what I'll do with these ways before we put it all back together, there's a couple of nicks. And I've got a, a stone. This. I'll run the soft side. I think this is a 2000 stone or something. I'll just run that over the top with a bit of WD. Just to get it nice and smooth. Anyway, so. The biggest issue with this lathe and the kit. So the kit. You've got the motor. You get this. That isn't it. So you get the motor, you get the wiring, this, and the inverter that's in the box that I've shown you before. The biggest thing is look at the difference in size we have. Yeah? Not so much the issue with the overall size of the motor, but the actual mounting plate. Yeah? So this won't bolt up to that PCD. So we have to make an adapter to go on the plate, so this fits. It's a lot bigger than, it's just because my hand's so far away, it looks tiny. It's not actually tiny. So we need to make that motor fit on there. I'm probably gonna have to open this up, but it's not that much because the motor center shafts aren't that much different. But once we put like a, a 5mm packer, because the adapter, in there, that's going to be further. So we might have to open up this. Yeah? Right, so. I think best to just take this off. And work with it off. Yeah. Let's get this off. It's going to be easier to work with. Right, so that was an absolute pig to get off because someone's had it off before mullered the end of these over 
and also this is all beat up it's all bent so we're gonna have to straighten that clean that up on there on the lathe so it goes through nice so this goes on there now what i've just noticed with this new motor is there is a crack in one of the feet so we're already onto a bit of a shit up but as this is a bottom of a top foot it's not really that bad because the load goes that way so what we need to do we need to get this on there by the looks of it we're gonna have to extend it down because we cannot extend it up so we need some sort of plates to go on here bolted onto this countersunk big enough to take this PCD, which is pretty simple. So I've got, we need two strips of steel, be six mil, but one a bit bigger, bolted to this, countersunk, and then bolt these to that. Get me? Understand what I mean? So these can be nuts and bolts, but these ones are gonna have to be fannied around a bit to get them to, you know, go in. Might have to thread it. Drill and tap it, bolt in that way. I don't know. Let me get my, uh... yeah, because we could, couldn't we? We could, uh... hmm. Let me have a think for a minute. Right, so that plan's not going to work because the offset's different this way. Yeah? So when I put that on there, the bracket was about here. And we're hard up so we are going to need some plates to offset this quite a um, quite a bit i'm not gonna lie probably an inch compared to them offsets so what i'll probably use is some of this yeah tell you what I've... You didn't fire off straight away on them holes. I won't even get away with using them. But if not, I've got some of these somewhere with no holes in here. And I'll just make two strips. And they can go on there, get counter sunk in. And then this will bolt to that. Simple, pimple. Right, so I've got a couple more. Can't find the other one without holes in, but I could. Maybe weld two of them together to make one square plate. Let's just have a look if that will fit. I don't think it will. That's in there. No. Oops. So now they'll have to be two separate plates. I think we'll get away with the moles though, look. Swing that one over. Yeah. So we get away with the moles. All we gotta do then is mount these in the correct place on there to allow for the offset of this motor into that hole. Can't see a single thing that can go wrong, can you? So let's get a pen and some paper. Let's do some numbers. Ryan, so what I've done here. Is I've drawed the plate to that PCD. I've countersunk the one, so it'll be on that side. So that's countersunk, and then this one's just a normal cap head. But what I've done on the back, see that hole there, that M10 is actually an M8 now. And I've counterboard it to take the head of an M8 cap head. So that fits in there like that. Yeah, and then that goes in there. That one fits inside and that goes in there. <coughs> Something like that. And this is just a proof of concept. So I'm gonna nip that up, nip that up, and then we'll try and get it in the hole. Because I had to countersink that one so it will fit, you know what I mean? But this is the right offset. It's like 30 mil from there. 30, 25, something like that. So, I'll tighten this up and then we'll try it in the hole and see if it actually fits. Right, so, it, it's nearly in. 
that pin has got a little bit of a bend to it, so I don't want to get it in all the way. So as we can see, our motor is far back, so we're going to have to open this up a touch. Yeah, but it's in. It's semi on. It's just got a. You know, that needs to go that way a touch because it's up against. But it fits, it's in the hole anyway. Don't stick out that much further than mine. No, mine just sits about level. You can see the difference in size compared to this beast. So nearly there, uh, adjust the hole, it's just off. So when this, this bit comes back, it'll go over, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and then, once we've done that, chop that out, finish mounting the bottom, all we need is a sprocket or a, a, um, a pulley, like a one inch. I mean, we could probably machine the one out, one of the ones that we've got, but I'm not going to be able to put a keyway in it because I don't own a brooch, unless I do it in the mini machine and just cut in, but... It's not really going to work, is it? I might have to think about what I'm going to do with that. But I think that just looks like a one inch normal V belt pulley will go on there. Mm. So, yeah, it's just going to be these plates. So, we'll take this back off. We've got to make the bottom one. It should be easier because all the bolt holes, they're not, they haven't got to be captive or anything. It's just drill. And bolt and now because we've got the top one on it, it'd be a bit easier. Let me get it off again. It's this top one, because it was all countersunk, because the bolts are in the way. But the top one, it's literally that's just got to go in there, like there, drill for the two bolts, and they should just about clear. Because if you're looking, this one's here. If I put like uh, Allen head bolts in there, we are good to go. Yeah, so it's quite easy, really. Just a couple of square plates, bit of jiggery pokery, bit of holes, bit of countersink, a few bolts. I think the hardest bit is going to get the get in the one inch pulley. Well, this is the main thing with these lathes. The other thing we do with this lathe, I'll show you mine, is we step them out with these. That's just a bit of stainless rod, bar even. That is normally a hard against. But it really limits your travel. It's normally, that only comes to there. So once you've got stuff everywhere, so you've got a cutter in, you know what I mean? Or you've got a cutter in that way. You're really limited, but see how much more you get? It's, it's, it's quite big. I can literally redo discs just by turning this to an angle. And then you can get so much more depth and all they are is just M10 bolts with, I think they're like, uh, I can't remember when I made them. 30 mil. 30 mil spacers, M10s. Just brings it over a little bit more. Right, so we need to get this second plate done, which should be pretty easy. Now I've said that, I'm thinking, how am I supposed to drill? back holes because I can't see them without taking it off but when I take it off I won't know where the holes are going to be hmm I figured out what I might have to do stick that in there so these holes line up and then draw around it scribe around it yeah so I'm going to lift this up slide that in so it's there where it needs to be bolted that way. And I'm going to scribe around it. And that will give me my edge. 
and then I can uh, work from there. Easy. Well then, we have our holes. Now the way I did that, remember I said I was going to scribe around? So that was on there, and that was on there, and you can see where I scribed, yeah? And then I got some tape, and I put that on there. Yeah, cut it to size, pushed it in my finger, put it out with the standard blade, and took that off there, turned it over, and placed it on there against the scribe lines, cut it in, sent it out it, drilled it, and this can come off and go flip flip. Now I've got to use my short M8s. But I also need to put washers on, and I will tell you why. Um, so on a couple of these, a couple of these, because these, these bolt holes, oops, sorry, go through into there. And I think that may be of how they bent that bar by literally doing it up. And he's deflected the bar, if you know what I mean. There we go. So that one's a bit tight. Oh, it's going. There's me gallon key. I use my knee, obviously. There we go. A few bit of shit in that thread. So basically. Now what we're going to do is stick this back on. Hold on, let's just check. Yeah, we're not sticking through. So now this has got to go back on there. Oops. And hopefully the bolt holes will line up. And these bolts, the washers are catching. Look. Oh, you're not going to see, are you? I'm going. Oh, I've turned you the wrong way. Sorry. The washers. <laughs> Catching. So I need a washer. With no head. Because. Otherwise, it won't go over. Look. So this one is, must also be catching. Right. I'm gonna find some different washers, people. Right, so that's on. So we've got, let's go recap. Two plates, six mil thick. And we've just realigned the holes and did what we had to do by countersinking this one. The other three are, you know, cap heads. Oh, why do you always, cut cap heads. So that was pretty simple, to be honest. A bit of head scratching. We got it in there. And that, I've just ovaled it out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put it together. Where is... Where's my tripod gone? Oh, I'm standing up here. Dumbass. So, I'm going to put you on a tripod like so and now where should I put you put you here drop you down wobble 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 you can watch me struggle to get this in I think I might have to put the adjuster in at the same time It's not the best to be honest, it doesn't, it doesn't tighten up in the right position. It should be tight there, but if not, if I can put a washer in there, I think it would be. Have a look at washers in there. Let's see if this thin washer is too thick. Yeah, it is. You need like a really thin washer or put it 
put it in the lathe and take a touch more off there. Then, succeed. It's about the same with that. We literally just need a nuts, nuts bollock. We need a quarter of that thickness. That's what we need. I'm just going to pop it in the lathe and give it a quick skim. Just to pull this down. And, because I can't put all of this in the lathe. So I need, because I can't grab it, can I? Right, so what I've done there is took a tiny skim off. We'll see how far off we are. I don't know far off, see. So we can see how to go through the monitor. That'll do. Right, I'm trying to chuck this bloody motor back in there. It's not the easiest to bloody motors. Me and this freaking big. If you look down here, see when that side's up against, there's a gap. Well, that's about in line, that is. So I think that gap shouldn't be there. So I'm going to measure it and make a space for it. So literally two of my M12 washers fitted perfect. What I'm going to do now is get it all in line, try and twat this in cocky handy into the wee washers now. Which is just lovely, obviously. Come on. Beautiful. Right. So I've moved both the washers to this side. And now, when you put that in there, uh, we're in the hole. Yeah? So we know we're on level now. So we know we're going to be pulling on this massive motor square. So what I've got to do is rear fix all of this. I'll tell you what, two hands would probably be easier, wouldn't it? And there's a little split pin. E back on. You see, every problem has a solution. You just gotta figure out what it is. Yeah? Yeah? Right, so as we've got the motor on, what we are trying to do is make a pulley. So this is the original one. And we've machined the back off machine the front off we have made a right freaking mess of my lathe you can't the video does not do it justice just how much shit is everywhere this is cast it's everywhere so we've machined the back off we've machined the front off now we're gonna do some stuff we've opened this up 
We've done some maths. And what we need to do, because I don't have a brooch. So what we're going to have to do, you see my line? That is 9.5 mil. Right? That is the line I've got to drill an 8 mil hole on. Then I've got to bore this out to 24 mil. And then we've got to machine the sides down. So basically, we're going to end up with... What we've got now is a 16 mil. And we're going to end up with an 8 mil. Then I am going to draw... Then, basically, we're doing this. I'm going to end up with a 24 millimetre hole with an 8 mil hole like that. That there is half of the 8 mil, which is our 4 mil keyway. All we've got to do then is machine these little corners out. And technically, we should have the 8 millimetre keyway spacing we need. That there is the group screw. Yeah. So, right, we've got the pulley on. So what I have to do is imagine this pulley is like this pulley. As you can see, it's a little bit different now. This is just a two. So I have to machine the one off that was on the back, machine the one off that was on the front, counterbore this down and open to allow for the keyway. So I'll put you some little pictures now of what we did on the milling machine. So my dad was here. I don't really record when my dad's here, so we just sort of crack on with it, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then that, the ID was bought. This is a 24 mil shaft on the motor. So we went 10th hour over on that. Just that's a nice fit. It's not a press fit, but it's, you know, it's an interference. It's a snug fit. And she runs perfectly true. And then we've also lined this up with this. And then there's a grub screw that goes down and pushes on the keyway, which holds this in place from sliding in and out. So that all that needs now is a nice big V-belt, which I haven't got. And I'm not going to lie, the machine came with two, but they were small anyway, and I've, I've freaking lost them. I don't know where they are. So that is how this motor kit goes on. Some plates, modified pulley. So now we're getting onto electrical, which is also pretty, pretty simple. So we've got to put this panel on here, the right way up. So we've got to drill some holes for the cables. I'm just going to put this panel there, which is exactly the same as where it is on mine. See? You can't really have it there because it's too big. So I'm going to drill a hole for this cable to go in. And we're going to put the panel on there. And then we're going to start a bit of electrics. So I'll tell you why, it does look nice in black, doesn't it? And then we've got a few other bits we need to make. We need to make a new lever for here. This... We need to make something better for here. And I'll show you that once we've got it together. And I think we, there's supposed to be more handles on here and they've broken off as well. So there's a couple of bits, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this onto there. Just drill them, nuts and bolts, and uh, put a hole for the cable. And we'll go from there. Another quick job I've got to do is these handles. It's just M6. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that in the lathe and just put an M6 die down them just to replace the two little handles that are busted. Nice simple job, but it's another one I've got to do. I'm just going to turn that much in the lathe to that. 
Well done, Danny. Well then, so we have our motor wired in Delta. Gable's come, we plugged in. This is basically exactly what it tells you in the instructions. And it tells you how to program it to use the pendant, which is this little doofer. That powers up. And we start to go around. Beautiful. And then what I'd do is I'd use this inner one and that one, the smaller one up there, to get the speed up. But I'm guessing somewhere in there, that's 50, running at 50 hertz at the minute. Somewhere in this box of tricks, you can probably get it to go faster. But once that's geared with the belt, that's going to be moving those. Oops. Right, so I'm going to finish that up. We'll put the cover back on there. And we need to do a few other jobs, mainly on this thing. And start rebuilding, get it all back together. So yeah, that is how I put that big ass motor on my slave. The only thing I haven't got is the belt, so he's gonna have to do that. All right, let's get this built re per, rebuilt, shall we? All right, we're all back together, and we are oiled with actual whey oil, and I've redone all the the um. Oh, what they're called. You know, the screws, which are just the wobble. I don't know what they're called. These like little plates in here. You have to set the tension on it. So, with a bit, of, bit tight at the minute, because I've just put some nice thick whey oil in there. But everything is really nice and snug. So even this is really nice. So yeah, she's in a lot better condition than when she came. She's all oiled, she's running a new controller. Should be nice for him. All right, gotta get it loaded up. The million head is still over there. Get it back to uh, Wales. This is MRM Speed Shop one. So I gotta get back to them. The motor. I can't wait to see the cutting force on it because that is some talk on that thing. Right, there we go. And that's how you put the bigger motor on one of those little legs. See you later, people.